What is up YouTube and welcome to this Batwoman Season 2 Episode 1 Breakdown and Review. Now the amount of hate around the first season was very, very high and I was never too much of a fan of Ruby Rose in the role. Personally, I've never been a big fan of her acting, but the new actress, Javicia Leslie, absolutely nailed the role of Ryan Wilder, the inheritor of the Batwoman suit and title. Now, in my opinion, she brought some gravitas and authenticity to the role and some really, really great acting. There will be spoilers in this video, and if you enjoyed it, then please do drop a like down below and subscribe with notifications on. So with Ruby Rose abruptly leaving the show after the first season, I did wonder how the hell are they going to do a season two? There was an option of a recast, a new character, and they went with Ryan Wilder, a new original character. Now, on the surface, it sounded like it could be a total and utter mess, considering the amount of setup that had been done for season two with Sophia and in the wider Arrowverse with Crisis, Kryptonite, and the Justice League. But they handled this really well here, as Kate Kane doesn't quite get poochied, but she is gone and they left it kind of open-ended out of respect. Now, we open with a camper van that has Ryan Wilder in it, where she's living, as a jet crashes. But this was a jet carrying the Batwoman herself, as it was flying out of National City, but it was destroyed. The opening scenes flip between Ryan looking through the wreckage, trying to find survivors, with Luke and Mary trying to find Kate's plane, as they learn the horrible fact that it was indeed her plane that fell from the sky. Kate was in National City to work out a way to destroy the piece of kryptonite she gained from the crisis on Infinite Earth's crossover at the behest of Luke Fox, as not only is it dangerous in the wrong hands, but it can pierce her suit, except her plane was blown up on the way back. Now, I really like this opening as it deals with the elephant in the room of Ruby Rose's Kate Kane leaving and the Kate-sized hole that is left in the show. And instantly, we set up Ryan Wilder's backstory and her inherent good nature. We learn her adopted mother was killed in an attack by Alice's gang who wanted to squat in the new home they went to, which we saw in the flashback. Now, Ryan was desperate to revive her to no avail, and we can see this trauma in this, and it's evident that she's been through some stuff, man. The opening may have been a bit too fast, flashing through each character of the story, but not only are we dealing with a season opener, which usually focuses on where each character is, and also having to introduce a new character after Ruby's abrupt departure, and in season one, there was no transition or Doctor Who style regeneration scene. Usually we know when a character is getting recast. But here, I think with the short notice, they did a great job in my eyes. Now, Luke, Mary and Jacob all come to the realization that Kate Kane was on that fallen jet and is now missing. Jacob arrives at the scene to look for his daughter as Sophie is there already as Alice watches. It's an interesting way and at first I thought this was Kate getting the fridge treatment. But the writers have weirdly left it sort of open-ended should she ever return. There's a real question mark over Kate's disappearance and subsequent death. I think irregardless how Ruby left the writers in the lurch, Killing off Kate Kane like this would be a huge mistake as, in my opinion, it's such an important character in not only the Bat family, but the wider DC world, and I think that character needs to be done better in the future. Now, we catch up with Tommy as he arrives at the Wayne Industries Tower under the disguise of having Bruce Wayne's face, and the excuse for his return is to find Kate Kane, which is a sort of a funny reverse of last season. I have to say, the way that they've done this really kind of fell into their laps and it's worked really well, which I think is a testament to the writers, at least. Of course, the Tommy face thing happened last season, but it would have been much better if we didn't know and had the huge reveal over the course of a season that this isn't actually Bruce Wayne, which, yes, I would have liked that and I think that would have been better, but I imagine that a few fans would feel a bit ripped off 
Especially when the Bruce Wayne on TV we had over in Titans, people weren't really much of a fan of when I was personally. He's pretty bad at being Bruce as he has no clue really where anything is and he instantly becomes sus. I mean, he could have come up with an amnesia excuse or something like that, but it's clear that this is supposed to be a one and done persona in this episode only. But there is some lead in the pencil for him to do this again. We'll then see Ryan at her parole officer meeting, which looks weirdly like the room from the Joker. I instantly thought, hold on a minute, is is that the same? Yeah, it's weird. But we later learn that Ryan was sort of framed for drug crimes and sentenced to 18 months when she was younger, but was put on the path by being adopted by a decent woman, which was killed by Alice's gang. Now, the parole scene is important as we learn that Ryan had martial arts skills and must be very proficient if her parole officer suggests maybe getting a job teaching classes. She's behind on court fines and is living out of a car. Well, yes, this is a bit of a trauma bingo with so much unnecessary hardship heaped on the character but to be honest that's just a bit of nitpick in there i could really just look over that but it is something i did think was a bit odd now sophie and julia are talking and it's clear this romance is complicated but it's one of those things where it's just baggage from another season and another character so the show's creators did a stellar job of inserting ryan into this world and these continuing storylines as almost every single one becomes relevant to our new Batwoman. Sophie thinks that it's Sophia, a storyline which we will touch on the end. One hangover which will stick around twofold is Alice as she goes to Tommy at Wayne Manor as he is making the most of his new face and persona. But a drunk Alice turns up resentful of him and I feel the writers did really miss a trick by keeping Tommy around as Bruce would be really interesting but her plan was to have Kate killed by the father using the kryptonite as a MacGuffin however Tommy is just uninterested in all of this and just wants to live the party life and also live the Batman life and live what he's wanted But what's key, though, is how Alice has gone off the deep end. Her plans have failed and she's turned into some sort of anarchist joker as she randomly kills one of Tommy's conquests for no reason. Yeah, I wasn't too much of a fan of that, if I was honest. Now, keeping Alice around is curious, as her whole deal was tied up with Kate. So it would have been nice to have a new villain, but will we get in that in the form of Sophia there? Now, the Sophie and Julia storyline rumbles on as we are dealing with a bit of a hangover from the first season with these two. Now, Julia was given the secret of a safe, which is a mystery throughout the episode, but it's just a letter to Sophie with Kate explaining that she is Batwoman. I guess it's a full stop on that story, and I would like maybe these two to join Team Batwoman, but I'm not too sure if that would be or fit with the persona of Batwoman. Luke and Mary are still, however, looking for the suit, which has gone missing, when they finally find Ryan. Ryan makes a really good case for keeping the suit by saying while she has no legacy, she isn't special, but she's the silent majority. These people who fall victim to crime every single day and are just a number. I really love this speech. It has parallels to what's going on in the real world right now with people downtrodden and social injustice, but it's handled expertly. It's not token. It's not cringe. It just works out very well. Now, Mary's interjections were pretty clunky throughout the scene, but this whole scene was reduced when she just gave the danged suit back. Now, Tommy as Bruce then acts even more sus as he goes to Jacob to say Alice was at Wayne Manor. Why wouldn't someone with Bruce's money just have her kicked out? Yeah, but anyway, he speaks to Julia, seemingly having no idea who she is. He even fails her check when she tricks him into admitting that Alfred is somewhere other than London. There was a great scene with Mary as she looks into Ryan's life as Ryan reads the life story of Kate, which is really cool as the scenes are juxtaposed. And despite the huge disparity in privilege, they are sort of similar deep down. Now, Julia then approaches them to reveal that our boy Bruce is really Tommy as she's got the fingerprints and she thought he was really dodgy. Now, he's trying to find the Batmobile and also wants to get the suit back. But as Luke said, he will be the most powerful person in Gotham if he has that suit, as it is stupidly powerful. 
Now, Jacob also takes up Bruce's intel and confronts Alice, which really seems lame as I imagine this, this scene, this reveal of Kate's identity to her father would have been a major, major scene if Ruby Rose was still around. However, Tommy is on his way to Ryan as she dons the suit and Tommy chases her with the Batmobile, which looks really cool. It's nice and grounded and really fits into the tone and aesthetic of this show. The fight was okay for really what it was, but she's shot with a kryptonite bullet and she rips Tommy's face off, which looks so really gross, to be honest. But he's sent back to Arkham there. Ryan takes the suit back, which I think she will be convinced into taking the suit and continue on. And considering the cliffhanger, Ryan will no doubt contact them. It's weird as her veins glow green from the kryptonite, and I'm worried they're going to give her superpowers, and would the Supergirl and Batwoman crossover be cancelled? Yeah, this was a bit of a shame, and it would have been a very interesting setup for Ryan to go over to National City. However, Alice goes to the, the dead now mouse and learns that Sophia caused the plane crash and saying they are even. Now, in the comics, Sophia was a citizen of Koreana and kept the nation in check. They had a whole storyline with Batwoman and her as well. So, considering the resources, I would imagine that the pirate world of that would come into this. However, Alice is now going to war with her as she had her own plans to kill Kate. Now, all the while, Ryan will be in the middle of this war, and I really enjoyed this show. I had a blast. Last season, I watched the season and the episode, and I just thought, oh, this is just... Yeah, no, it didn't have that pizzazz to it, but this does, because the lead is gripping, and I need to know more of her backstory, and I want to see more of what she'll do and how she'll take upon the mantle of Batwoman. But that's it for this video, so please do drop a like down below, please do subscribe with notifications on, and I'll be back weekly with this. I do Batwoman videos, I do The Stand, American Gods, and now WandaVision as well, and I will be coming back with more Snowpiercer, so go and check that out. Subscribe to never miss one. So I'll see you soon, and goodbye.